This video has been sponsored by Brilliant.org. This video, <laughs> Fematica gang, Fematica gang, my boys. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to take a look at the uh, viral maths problema. I found it on some Facebook site. I haven't done any kind of geometry in quite a while. So here we go. We are going to take a look at this thing. And what we are going to look for today is the total area of all those squares combined. Yes, they are supposed to be squares. One more information. This semicircle that's supposed to be a semicircle passes right through this point right here. This point where our um, two squares basically lie on each other and the corner is right on the edge of the kind of bigger square here. This is what we are going to do today. I tried to solve it using analytical geometry, but I really didn't get too far because where well, squares are kind of hard to handle in analytic geometry if you want to put stuff into coordinate systems, okay? But yeah, we are going to do it the regular elementary geometry way today. Oh, daddy, you disappoint us. Why you do this now? Yeah, it is what it is. Got to do this today. And we only need two theorems today. On the one hand, Thales theorem stating that um, if we have a diameter passing right through the origin of a semicircle, it does it here, okay, that's supposed to be a perfect semicircle basically, then whenever we draw some kind of triangle into here that connects to the outer arc, it's going to be, well, a right triangle, okay, Thales theorem, meaning this triangle that we are going to have here inscribed into here with the edge lying exactly at this important intersection point, we're going to get a right triangle, Thales theorem. Okay, we can make some other sketches later. Also, we need another theorem, namely that in a right triangle, there's this one theorem about the height that states, okay, let us um, put our new triangle here. We're going to have this right triangle, okay, here we go. If we were to put a height into here, and we are going to have a certain hypotenuse. We are going to call it C. There's one more information about C that you probably already saw on the thumbnail. Then if we split this thing up into P and Q, so C being equal to P plus Q, we are going to have that our height squared is exactly P times Q. Okay, this is just a theorem about the height in a right triangle. I don't know the English name. It's called the Höhensatz in German, okay? Our C that we have right here, you have seen it in the thumbnail maybe, is exactly five, okay? This is our hypotenuse that we are going to have. So it's just from this point to here. So the basis of, do, uh, of those two um, squares combined basically, meaning this is five. Now we have a lot of information given, but we need to solve for the total area of this thing, um, of this construct. So how could we go about this? We have a few sketches now. Okay, our semicircle isn't really relevant anymore. It was just here for um, Thales' theorem to actually be there. Well, how could we continue from here? Well, let us at first assign some variables and then let's hope for the best that we can actually solve for P and Q. I mean, we have a lot of stuff given basically. They are all kind of connected, those squares. Maybe we can do something with this, solve a system of equations maybe. So at first, let's assign some variables. We have our height here. One thing to notice about our height is exactly that it lies here. Meaning our height that we have here is exactly the base or the height of this square. So we know the dimensions basically of this square. So the area of this square is exactly h squared. Well, now let's assign a variable name to this side length, okay? Glad they are all squares. Let's call it a t for example, I don't know. What is t exactly? Well, t is nothing but the height plus well, this part, the height or the base of this smallest square. Um, let's give it a nice and spicy name. Let's go for 
A for example, okay? We're going to call it A. So the height or the base of this really small square is going to be A. Meaning overall, we have a new equation T being equal to H plus A. Maybe we can do something with this later. Also, there's one other connection between T and H. We have said it before. Our height is also the base of this middle square, basically. Meaning H plus T is exactly 5. Okay, this is the next really important connection. H plus T is exactly 5. Okay, we are going to get some equations together. Maybe we already have enough to solve a system of equations. Maybe we don't. Maybe we need some more information. Well, the, the, the biggest issue here is that we need to find an expression for t in some way, okay? Or an expression for h in itself. But h, for example, has two variables come with it. So we need two more equations that have p and q, for example, in them. Can we find something that has to do with p and q? Let us go for p at first and let's see if there's some equation that we can some add spice to it, okay? So, so we need some spice here to solve for it. Um, for example, P. P is exactly, if we take a look at here, this line segment. Okay, P is this line segment. No, not B, it's supposed to be P. That, that was a weird writing position. Okay, P. P is kind of associated to our H that we have, okay. Um, if you take a closer look, okay, our h goes up here, it's right connected to this square. Meaning overall our p is nothing but our length h minus our a that we have here. I hope you can see where this came from. So our p is nothing but h minus a. I also have to think about everything as always because um, I don't have all those equations in my head. I need to think for everything yet again because there are a lot of equations that we are going to get here over the course of this problem. Also, can we find an expression for Q? Let us go by the same means. Basically, Q is exactly well. Q is the line segment from here to here. Well, it's nothing but T plus A. Okay, T plus A is exactly our Q. Okay, now we have a lot of equations. Is there anything else that we need? I mean, we have solved for P and Q, maybe we are going to plug this into here at first. So H squared is exactly P times Q, but this is also H minus A times T plus A. Ah, T plus A. That's not too good either because now we also have one other variable here, okay? So, so if for example this would be, this T would be connected to our H, then, well, we could maybe get rid of something. Maybe we could solve for one variable. Is there an equation that we already have that combines T with H in some way? Well, glad we have. T is nothing but H plus A. So let's go for this. So we have H minus A times H plus A plus A is H plus 2A. Now the door closed magically. I think there's some wind going on there in the kitchen. Never mind, let us solve for everything and see what we get. We're going to get h squared um, plus 2ha minus ha minus 2a squared. And hey, here's where the magic is going to happen. We have h squared and h squared on both sides. Let us subtract h squared on both sides. Also, we can simplify some stuff here. We're going to have that zero is nothing but, okay, 2ha minus ha is nothing but ha minus 2a squared. Let's suppose a is not equal to zero. I mean, if a were equal to zero, then this problem would um, be minimized pretty badly. Okay, would this even work out with the semicircle? Does this even work out then? No, I don't think that it would work out. H is, uh, a is not equal to zero. We can divide both sides by it, meaning we're going to get rid of this. Let us add 2a on both sides, meaning, h is nothing but 2 times a. This is the first thing. That's a lot of information that we already have. h is nothing but 2 times a. Okay, let us go ahead and solve for some more stuff. We now have the connection that h is nothing but 2a. But we also, I, I mean, now we have a connection between h and a, but we also need something for t. I mean, t is still there, okay? 
Good that we have this equation, we have used it before. If we were to plug in our h being equal to 2a, we are going to get that t is nothing but 3a. Okay, now we have an expression for t and we have an expression for h. All that's really left for us to solve this problem is to find an explicit value for a. This is the last thing that you really need. And this is pretty good because take a look at this equation. h plus t is nothing but 5. Well, we have an expression for h. We have an expression for t. Let us plug everything in. t is nothing but 3a. h is nothing but 2a makes 5a. Meaning overall 5 is equal to 5a. Let us divide both sides by 5. 5 is not equal to 0. It's the successor of 4. So by the Peano axioms it's not equal to 0. Meaning overall a is equal to 1. Okay, a is equal to 1, meaning overall h is equal to 2, meaning overall t is equal to 3. Okay, now we have the base and the height of each and every square here, meaning overall we can actually compute the areas. The total area, area total, is nothing but 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. This overall makes 9 apples plus 4 apples a day plus 1 apples a day is equal to 9 plus 1 makes 10 quick mass plus 4 is 14. So the total area of what we have here is 14. I hope you did like this little geometry problem. That was a lot of thinking. I actually thought that I would need to do two or three takes of this video because, well, there are a lot of equations here and there are a lot of errors that are bound to happen while doing this problem the, the first time. So it took me quite a while to actually um, find a solution to this problem just because I tried with analytic geometry at first and then I didn't know about all the theorems from from scratch so so I, I had to derive a lot of stuff. It took me quite a while but I hope you still did enjoy this video. If you did don't forget to check out today's sponsor Brain.org. They are going to pro provide you with a lot of geometry problems I swear. Elementary geometry is a fundamental branch of mathematics that gave rise to abstract powerhouses like general relativity and algebraic geometry over the last centuries. If you are interested in learning more about geometry, its fundamentals and related topics, I would recommend you to check out brilliant.org today. If you take a look at their huge collection of mathematical and physics problems, you might find that this website is such a great resource for almost everything, ranging from algebra, special relativity, all the way to numerical analysis and, of course, geometry. You would like to understand the concept of trigonometry a bit better? Brilliant has you covered. Simply go to their geometry-based courses, for example, their Geometry Fundamentals course, put in some time and effort and check if your solution fits the provided ones. Brilliant is seriously amazing and I just love to work through their courses. Especially dear to my heart are the differential equation courses because they really prepare you for your later mathematics studies in a fun and intuitive way. Their list of courses also grows each and every month and I can really recommend you trying out Brilliant today. If you are interested in trying it out for free, make sure to use the link at the top of the description. With it, you can get completely free access to Brilliant.org and the first 200 people to use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So try it out for free today, check out Brilliant, support the channel this way and I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, recommend channel if you like. If you wanna support the channel a bit more, buy those teachers I created, blah blah blah, you know the drill. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. You guys are amazing. Ciao. Hallo? Anton, such? Such, Anton? Such?